Hello, how are you? This is a new series that we're releasing each week. So we have a picture book and then we have the activities that support the learning in the book. Um, so let me just flick through quickly. So I've put this together as a lookbook, um, just keeps it all together so much easier to file. You can choose to do it this way or do each activity as you go. Now in the back, so these I talk about in every video that I've done probably over the last five years, but this is the first time that I've actually put it all together. Um, so for each book, so this week is Possum Magic, the ones that are highlighted here are the ones that are covered, the learning areas and skills that are covered in this book, um, in this activity pack. So we've got crossing the midline. Imagine a line between your nose and your belly button. That's when one part of your body is crossing over to the other side. So we can use this on the puzzle activities, um, the sequencing, and this one, we can put the parts on one side, the book on the other. So we're actually learning to reach over and cross that midline. We've got cutting. So for this activity, you can get your little one. You may wanna cut out the outside, depending on the age of your child, but get your little one to cut through the middle and make the puzzle pieces. We've got, let's go across this way, sensory play, so the cooking, and then this one here is a Play-Doh activity. So we're involving the senses. Um, I really wanna encourage the learning through play, not just using pen and paper. So to use as many other different bits and pieces involving the senses when we learn and do these activities. We've got sequencing. Um, you can read more on these later, but I just want to show you where they link in to this activity pack. So this one in the story of Possum Magic, um, I'm not going to read it. There's enough videos on YouTube. You can go to your local library as well or get the book yourselves if you don't have it already. But the basic storyline is we've got Grandma Poss and Little Hush. So Grandma Poss makes the magic that makes uh, Little Hush invisible. So Hush is loving it and is excited, which is why we brought the emotions into it. But then she gets really sad uh, because she had, was that yet? She had koalas and kangaroos sitting on her and squashing her because they couldn't see her. So Grandma Poss couldn't remember the magic to make her visible again. Um, then she finally remembers that they have to go and eat food from each state in Australia. So they eat a different food as they go. Um, so this is a comprehension activity as well. So building those literacy skills of going to the book. So comprehension is um, understanding what you've read or heard, yes? So a lot of kids can read or often when you tell your kid to go do something and it looks like uh, lights are on nobody's home, it's that comprehension issue there. So we're working on that by reading the book and then going through and in order, um, recording or yeah, placing in order the different foods that they've eaten in each state. That one happens in this activity as well. I'll run through the activity soon. Yeah, so as they go through the different states and territories and cities, they eat a different food and then Hush, little possum, becomes visible again. Yes, I'll just quickly see there's a Vegemite sandwich there and her tail appears. And then I think by the time she has lamingtons, she's all good again. And then they're excited, yeah? And they're happy and dancing. All right, let's jump back. So I covered a few different ones there. I've done comprehension. So that was sequencing, vocabulary. Um, so I've picked on matching up opposites. So to build that vocab, again, build that understanding, you've got prepositions in there as well. Comprehension, I covered. Attributes. Um, this was, why did I highlight that one? Hang on, let me just flick through. So these ones as well. Um, yeah, that's covered in that one. And different foods. Sort of. So attributes are, um, we use that for classifying things. So say for 2D shapes, they will all have a flat surface, edges and corners. Um, animals, so birds will all have feathers. Um, lizards will have, sorry, reptiles will have scales. Do you see it? Like different features of different animals, things, plants. Yes? Uh, problem solving. So that is in this activity because you've got the problem of I need to match up all the different foods to the states. So going through those strategies, okay, we're gonna go through the book again, read it again, and look out carefully for the different foods when they're mentioned and match them up to the states. Same with this activity. And what else have we got? Science, cooking. So cooking covers following instructions under literacy, uh, mixing sub substances in science and cause and effect. So we're putting ingredients together, they react and get a new result. 
Yes, um, the cooking also ties into the sensory as well. Emotions, I think we covered. That was this activity, the emotions Play-Doh mat, which I'll go through in a sec. Food, so we've covered that obviously because the main activities are all about food. And my country, so learning about where I'm from, um, which includes cultural, obviously foods in this case, uh, also learning about the states and cities. All right, so if we actually go back to the beginning, I've included a map of Australia. Now this isn't for any particular purpose, it's to look at, you've got the states and the cities there uh, and territories. So getting your, obviously depending on the age as well, um, your two year old may not be interested at all in learning about the different states and territories. Maybe you could show them where, well, I'm in Perth. Um, you might be in a different state, but show them your state and where you live, yeah? And this one. So I did a video yesterday and I didn't like it. So I'm redoing it now. Um, it's always tricky on the first one because you don't quite know how you're going to present the series. So we've got Anzac cookies, pumpkin scones, Mornay and Minties, Vegemite sandwich, lamingtons, steak and salad, and pavlova. Now, pretty sure we start in Melbourne. I was going to check this before the video. Of course I didn't. So it is this page. There we go. They ate Anzac biscuits in Adelaide. Here we go. So we started in South Australia. Mornay and Minties in Melbourne, down the bottom here. It's gonna get squishy down this side. Um, that's why I haven't Velcro dotted this one. By putting in a display folder as well, you can keep the bits and pieces in there. You can also, when you're using Play-Doh or textures, finger paint, whatever for the emotions one, you can just wipe it clean. Um, you can go through and laminate them if you want to, but I just found a display folder really quick and easy to put it together. All right, where are we up to? Steak and salad in Sydney. So it looks like we're traveling around this side of Australia. There we go, Sydney. And then pumpkin scones in Brisbane. So I'm not gonna read it all. It was there in the far north of Australia that they found a Vegemite sandwich. Yeah, I found Vegemite artwork. Um, so that was in Darwin in the Northern Territory. And then we go to Perth and we eat pavlova. That's where I am, down here. And then all the way to Tasmania, down the bottom here, to Hobart, and they ate lamingtons. And that's when Little Poss, no, Little Hush, there we go, there. She became visible again, eating lamingtons. Her head was the last bit of the body to become visible. All right, so let's chuck these in there and hopefully I'll remember that for the next one. Emotions, so we've got the Play-Doh mat. Uh, my Play-Doh is super festy. I haven't made any more, but I will in one of these next videos. Um, so I did this time, actually I'm gonna use paint. Hang on a sec. Okay, I'm back. I was going to use a um, washable marker just because it was there, but I'm gonna use paint instead. After I just said that it, you know, they're not really made for pen and paper. So, um, this is obviously a koala, not a possum. Um, we've included this because Hush, um, I'm pointing over there to the book, sorry, experiences a lot of different emotions throughout the book. So you could either pick an emotion, um, you could, okay, let's go this one. So we've got Poss, ah, Hush, sorry, and Poss, who are super happy and excited. I have no clue how I'm gonna do this with paint, but when you have an excited sort of Face. Your eyes are nice and bright. Oh dear, this might be a little bit scary. We've got a big smile. Oh, it's not too bad. Uh, what other facial features? We've obviously got the nose already sorted. Your nose doesn't do a huge amount. It's not all that expressive. I'm just going to stick with that. So, to just go a bit more on the sensory element, we can use our fingers to brighten that up a bit. But you've got little... Um, suggested ideas on the bottom here. So for this one, um, in the display folder, you just wipe it clean. So I'll turn the page while I'm talking. Um, so for this one, I've suggested, you know, just an idea. Um, you can go through or sit in front of a mirror and practice different emotions and then um, try and attach the emotions to the faces that you're pulling. You can go through your favorite book, whether it's this one or another book, look at the different faces and see if you can tell how they're feeling and why they might be feeling that. So we've obviously got a very excited possum here with the hands outstretched, jumping up in the air, 
um, huge big smile and bright eyes. So we know that she's excited and we know that she's excited and happy because she's now become visible. Yes, so she's no longer sad. Um, you can, no, I'm just gonna leave that one. So practice your different ones on here. Uh, for your little kids, your say two, three year olds, you're probably only going to do sad, happy, angry, um, you know, starting with those smaller emotions to give them the words, the vocabulary to be able to express how they're feeling. Yes, and understand how they're feeling. As they get older, the emotions get more complex and you'll add a lot more emotions in. Uh, we do have other packs on emotions too, if you need help with that and regulating them. All right, this one is already in order, so I'm gonna take it off and mix it up. This is where we can use bilateral coordination as well. So there's Velcro fluff on there. Um, so these are just Velcro strips that I've cut up and they've got the hooks on the back. So for this activity, um, I don't have a huge amount of room because I've got to fit it all under the camera, but I'm going to put my pieces on my right side here and the page is on the left. I'm going to grab the pieces with my right hand, cross the midline over to the left. Yes, might help if you could actually see them. Um, if your little one doesn't have a dominant hand, practice with each one. Yes, it only becomes an issue when they, so my boy would do this and we ended up with the OT. So he would, if it was on this side, he would take it to the midline, wouldn't cross, would pass it to this hand, and would put it there. And then the same, everything just stopped and um, didn't cross this middle line. Same when he wrote his name, he'd write the first hand, first half with his left hand, switch pens and write it with, switch hands, sorry, and write it with his right. That becomes an issue. Um, it's not an issue if your child hasn't decided their dominant hand before seven. After that, go see no T. Anyway, so we've got these on the side. Now, what do we do first? We did Anzac cookies in Adelaide. And then we did Mornay and Minties. I'm going from memory, I may be wrong. Pretty sure it was steak and salad in Sydney. Pumpkin scones in Brisbane. Pavlova was Perth, which was second last. Vegemite sandwich was Darwin in the Northern Territory and Lamington's was in Tasmania. So with this, um, obviously I've done this video a couple of times and I've created this and paid attention to it. Um, for your little one, getting that sequencing in order, do it with them, talk it through the process and go back to the book and read the book as you go, yeah? All right, now we've got the journey. So this one is a, or you could use, paint if you wanted to. I'm going to use a washable marker. So I know we started, so we're drawing the journey around Australia. So we started in Adelaide, then we went to Melbourne, then we skipped Canberra, that didn't get a mention. We went to Sydney, Brisbane, up to Darwin, down to Perth. Do you see there, up, down, so we're using those prepositions, those directional instructions as well, which I don't think I ticked the box before and all the way to Hoover. Now, C here, I didn't pay attention. I think they did cross the C. There you go, they crossed the C in an umbrella. Isn't that cute? Um, let's wipe that off before I turn the page and mess up all the top ones. There we go, now we've got matching the opposites. You can do the same um, as far as putting the pieces on one side and then crossing the midline over. I won't go through this one, my video is going for too long. So we've got fast, a fast cassowary, a slow turtle. Again, building vocabulary with Australian animals. We've got a tall emu, a short numbat, a koala up in the tree, a platypus down on the ground. We've got a big eagle and a small galah, a soft kangaroo and a prickly echidna, a short budgie and a long Crocodile, a fat wombat, and a thin snake. Now to end it all off, this is our sensory play as well as the science and the following instructions. This is from taste.com.au. I don't do cooking. Um, it's a recipe for lamingtons, yes? And then you've got your educational benefits, and this is what's coming next week. I'm looking forward to doing that one. I hope you enjoy this. Um, I've got a cover page as well because everyone kept asking me about that last time. And I hope you learn lots and have fun and just enjoy, you know, reading. Um, I've got a new excitement for books now when I go shopping. I have too many books, but I'm going to go get more. All right, I'm going to stop. I will talk to you soon. See you.